they shall be listed among important soft skills that you need to have if you're going to manage your relationships well. You need to have some good soft skills. I still wince when I find out that people don't know how to present well. That's terrible. In this world, a lot of what we do now involves you being able to present, being able to know how to act on camera, how to stand in the room and connect with people, how to write well, how to speak well. Those are key. That's from me. But the MasterCard Foundation um, talked about a few things, and I want to mention them. Number one, social skills. The fact that we are social media doesn't mean we have social skills. I'm particularly put off by the behavior of many folks on Twitter. I call them a lynch mob. People are very uncivil on Twitter. They are not courteous. They don't know how to disagree without being abusive. You don't want to be among those people. And if you are, I hope you will change that we can agree without being we can disagree without being disagreeable. And so it's important that those social skills are there, that we must express ourselves courteously, civil. We must respect others. There are some three words that I was taught as a child and which I have passed on to my own children and to anyone around me. You must learn how to say thank you. You must be able to say please, and you must be able to say I'm sorry. Anybody who's too big to be able to use those words really has issues in terms of socialization. And so Master Scott talks about the need to get along well with others, um, to respect others, and to express appreciation, to know how to resolve conflict. We must be able to resolve conflict to still try and look for how you can maintain the relationship, not to become, not that I want to win and look good at the expense of the other person. So we must behave according to our social norms well. The other one is what I alluded to earlier, communication skills. And this include effective expression. How do you get your message across that in, your, in one sentence is clear? People don't have to come around three, four times before you understand, before they understand what you're trying to communicate. I had an MD that used to always tease us. He was an American elderly, American gentleman who was often shocked by the way Nigerians will ask questions. Sometimes at a town hall, people will tell a story that is difficult for you as a speaker to follow before you get the question. So his favorite saying was, now it's time for Q&A and a question starts with a W or an H, which means you must ask, what is this about? Where is this going to happen? How? Not to tell a long story that in 1999, this, 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 and then your question is lost in the narrative. And you have to understand, especially dealing with a global audience, that those of us from sub-Saharan Africa, or Africa generally, we can be a bit long-winded culturally. We use three, four sentences for what those in the Western world we use one sentence for. So when you're dealing with a global audience, you need to be mindful and prepare ahead to keep it concise and be able to ask your question. And starting a question with a W, what, why, where, which, when, or an H, how, will help you to be able to be more concise than to start and say, you know, when this, and then that, and that, and then your question is lost. And the, you know, I'm, I'm sure many of you have asked and said, look, I didn't quite get your question. It's a polite way of saying, you lost me along the way. The odd, and so communication is about transmission well, and then listening to understand others, and then the importance of interpreting knowledge and ideas well. Another core skill that my, um, my MasterCard Foundation talked about is higher order thinking. And I like to call it critical thinking. A lot of people, and you must have seen it when people forward things to you on the internet, on social media, and you wonder, this can't be true. Why didn't this person think about this before forwarding? And then they tell you, I just shared it just in case. And I've said, this cannot be true. This is fake news. This has been doctored or something. Well, that's because people don't take time to do some critical thinking about what they're about to forward. Before you click forward, just look at it. How possible is this? How is it possible they say a man gave back? How is that possible? What's that? And all that really say, mm, so you can pack it. Or how about I cross check? This thing was found on a non-mainstream medium website. How about I check the mainstream news websites to see whether they have it? If they don't have it, how come? And then if you triangulate and you can't find it from two or three other sources, then you should, it's almost enough to say, you know what, this is not true. I don't want to be in a hurry to say I have the scoop, the first to get the gist, and then look like the class clown or the community clown at the end of the day when it turns out that it's false. So critical young 
Cliff employees, Mastercard Foundation said it helped with that higher order thinking or critical thinking enables them to solve workplace problems independently. They're not going to always be dependent on their supervisors. And it's something that employers look for. That's why you often will see sometimes um, that people will tell you this work, um, test was given to them in one top school, Harvard or Microsoft Business. Because when they give such tests, what people are looking for is how critically can you think? I don't want to use the cliche, think out of the box. But that's also saying, hey, you need to look differently about things. Don't look in the narrow and straight way, especially. And so um, this is something that I love to engage in with some of my younger colleagues in the office. And a couple of them are here with me. Ebenezer uh, Wikina, and so those of you on social media will probably know him very well, and Matthew Smart. There are times we just sit down and we are having our banters, and it's about a topical issue, and you find out that what we are looking at is how plausible is this? How about this angle? And at the end of the day, when we brainstorm, because of that higher order thinking, we have a better decision than if I alone had decided or one person had decided. So those are some of the ways that you really break it down now. You know, it's like meditating on that issue and really looking at all possible angles. That's where the breakthrough ideas will come from. That's where the innovation will come from. And I'm very glad, I'm very happy that a lot of innovation is coming out of Nigeria, which shows me that a lot more people are paying attention to such higher order or critical thinking. So I encourage you guys to do more of that, especially because you are in design. You're going to have to really be thinking um, critically in that regard to be bringing out breakthrough designs that are going to really be of great benefit to your clients in future. The other thing Mastercard talks about is self-control, and that's the ability to delay gratification. I don't like to stereotype, but people have said the younger generation, the generation next, uh, because they grew up largely on the internet and information is all easily available, they're used to getting things instantly. And so it's tough for them to deal with delays and stuff. Um, that is true to an extent, but I don't want to generalize everybody in that generation will act like that because there are always exceptions to the rule. But part of it is being able to pay the price. So if I make money today, is it for me to buy what's going to make me look swag and great because I want to demonstrate swag, I want to look all pepped up, or should I, de should I invest it and deny today's pleasure to have a long-term time pleasure. That's part of what you do. When you invest, it means you are not spending it today. So it's the distinction between a consumer and an investor. Unfortunately, around here, we have too many consumers who want to impress and who spend a lot of time trying to impress people they don't really care about and who don't really care about them. But it's better to be able to invest, delay the gratification so that when everything then kicks in and you are having multiple streams of income and multiple streams of expression and multiple avenues for fulfillment, you will have more wealth than those who are in a hurry. And as part of it, that's some delaying gratification. It's also about controlling your impulses, not being too quick to respond to a perceived insult on social media or anywhere. Sometimes it just takes you counting to 50, 100, reflecting over that thing, or you've composed that thing you want to regret, drop it, go for a walk, come back. Many times you find out that you write it differently and you respond differently, or you will read, see that perceived insult differently, and then putting yourself in the other person's shoes, you find out that maybe that's not what they meant. And when that kicks in with critical thinking, you'll be able to look at it differently. And the last one from Mastercard is about positive self-concept. It was also found among the most important skills across all outcomes. And it talks about, really, it relates specifically for job performance and income outcomes among youth. So that's MasterCard. Let me come back. I was saying those soft skills to build on the need to manage your relationships very well. Let me come back to another one of my own life principles and lessons. And this is key. And it's by no accident that these last two, I brought them at the rear because I don't want you to forget about them. Integrity is everything. Integrity is everything. Work, working for Chevron, not only will Chevron look at your results, but they will look at the behaviors you demonstrated in achieving those results. So you don't want somebody who makes a lot of money for the organization, but then creates reputational issues for you along the way. 
You don't want somebody who makes it to the destination and achieves the goals, but leaves a trail of dead bodies along the way, scandalous, unethical behavior. So you want to see someone who gets the results, but who also gets them in the right ways of what they call the Chevron way behaviors, that you must demonstrate honesty, integrity, have respect for people, be innovative, you should you demonstrate partnerships, mindful of diversity and inclusion and things like that. For me, integrity is everything. And I like to quote one of my favorite authors and a pastor, by the way, Rick Warren. He said, quote, the test of integrity is that your public life and your private life match. The test of integrity is that your public life and your private life match. And my own father used to say, God rest his soul. He's been gone for a while. But while I was growing up, one of his favorite things, quoting the Holy Scriptures, was a good name is better than riches. Or put differently, a, rich, a good name is more desirable than a great riches. And oftentimes, it will, have, it will tell you, remember whose child you are. So let nobody bring shame to the family name. So... As I look around today, I and mean, you look at people who are at the height of their careers, and then they fall into, uh, they fall from the great heights because of various scandals. This reminds me of the way, the reason why it's not about any reputation, it's not about popularity, it's not about making wealth, it's about the fact that you should do so in a way that does not assail your integrity. And I like the way uh, one thing, the way Billy Graham put it. He said, when wealth is lost, nothing is lost. When health is lost, something is lost. When character is lost, all is lost. Because if you lose money, you can recover money. So when wealth is lost, nothing is really lost. You lost money, you bounce back. When your health is lost, something is lost because once something is taken out of you, it's difficult to restore. But when your character is lost, your integrity, your <laughs> reputation, everything is lost. Everything is lost. And I found out that if you tell a lie once, all your truths then become questionable. If you tell a lie once, all your truths become questionable. My final life lesson that I'd like to leave with you and share is that you should put God first. Make God your CEO. Put God first, make him your CEO. My own faith defines and drives everything that I do. If God did not create me less than adequate and he didn't make the world less than adequate, then I cannot provide work, the quality of my work, the quality of my services. My relationships and interactions shouldn't be anything less than adequate. So don't shortchange people, because in the long run, you'll be shortchanging yourself. Since we all ultimately must give account of our life stewardship, then I have to make everything count. And I think you should make everything count. We shouldn't put so much energy into giving account of stewardship in the workplace, and then we fail in life. And so that's what drives me, that ultimately, I'm not working just for my boss in the office. I'm not working for the board of trustees or board of directors. I'm ultimately working for God. And so I've got to give the best in everything that I do. So it doesn't matter if your boss is tough and difficult. Suck it in. Doesn't mean you should change the work. You're ultimately accountable to God. So those are my life lessons. And I just want to close by reminding us that and I don't think anybody would disagree with me about how the COVID-19 pandemic has changed our world. And it just might as well have changed it forever. And one of the changes we have to face is how the work environment is changing. A lot of us never thought we would work fully from home. A lot of employers did not even want to listen to people. Some did not want to hire these people with disabilities. Now, all of us were rendered disabled working from home. So, it's important that we are flexible with what we do in the work environment and be able to be creative and innovative in how we're going to go around doing things. So as you launch your career and you seek ways to work virtually and take, make use of the internet to share your services with global audience, think creatively, come up with innovative developments that are going to help do that and also be open to 
hiring people who can work remotely and who can be creative in the way work is going to be structured. Um, these are the things I'd like to leave you with. Again, for those who may not have been here yesterday, I don't want to assume everybody was, but especially, and Ade has told me that we have at least 61 of you that are out operating out of the Niger Delta region. Because what my office does focuses on the Niger Delta region, I want to encourage you to follow us on our um, website, follow us on our collaborative workspace, which is ndlink, ndlink.org, www.ndlink.org. Follow us on all our social media handles so that you can be abreast of developments, opportunities, collaborations, within the Niger Delta. We, with our humility, we, we consider ourselves as the convener of development activities within the Delta. And so we want to continue to, it's .org, not .com, ndlink.org. Thank you for posting it. Yes, thank you. So those are the opportunities that are available to you. And we do tap into citizen and private citizens energy. Uh, to have them as advocates on things. So there will be some of our various platforms that you could participate in in that regard and be mindful. What we do is that we partner with a lot of organizations, hundreds of organizations, some of them in the IT space. So we can always make referrals. You can always connect with them on some of those platforms. Uh, with that, I realize I have 30 minutes and I think my time is up. I'd like to thank you for the time and I'd like to open it up now for feedback from you or whether you have comments or you have some questions. Thank you for having me and I'm glad that we're able to do part two today and we had no technical hitches. So back to Adea and Micah and the rest of you. Okay. Hello, sir. Thank you very much for your time, for the insightful session and for the timeless wisdom. Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes, I can yes. hear you. Yes, yes, can hear you. Can everyone hear you? Hear me? Oh, okay. Let's let's say a very big thank you to Mr. Tunji Doho for those words of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes, sir. So on behalf of all the participants of Design School, we would like to say a very big thank you. And um, yes, I'm sure the participants will have some designs for you. We will send them in <laughs> as soon as they work on the designs, just to say a very big thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> Lovely. Once That's again, thank you very good. much for joining us. We really, really do appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, everyone, thank you. My network is really bad here. Yeah, I'm struggling with my network now. So thank you once again for joining us. I really do appreciate you and do not take you for granted. Have a fantastic day, sir. Bye, everyone. Uh, Timile, I've handed over back to you before this network messes right. up the whole thing. Thank you, everyone. Bye. All right. Thank you, Mr. Ali. Thank you. All right, so thank you, uh, morning students.